Hey guys, welcome back to Ropo. Hope you guys are doing well, staying safe. And today in this video, we're going to show you the basics, the very basics of how to start programming on the latest Raspberry Pi Pico. So stay tuned. So in this video, what we're going to show you is I'm going to connect the Pico with the Raspberry Pi 400 over here that I have that is connected to my laptop. I do not have an external display right now available at the moment. So I'm connecting this to my laptop and the way you can do that is we've made an entire video showing how to connect your Raspberry Pis to your laptop, your PC. So you can just check the video out right now over here. And there's a blog as well written on the same thing. You can check that blog out in the description as well. Starting the programming with Pico is very simple. You just have to download two UF2 files that are available on the Raspberry Pi Pico page. You have to just download those two UF2 files. That is one of the C++ file and one is a MicroPython file. So you just have to download those two files and you're just ready to start coding. So I'm just going to jump right onto my screen and show you how you can do that and how to, the way to go about it. So over here on my screen, if you can see, I have downloaded the Blink UF2, which is the C++ file, and I've downloaded the, the MicroPython UF2 file. Both of them are available on the Raspberry Pi Pico directory. The link is down in the description. Check it out. So just download those files and let's start with the Blink thing. This is a C++ program and what it's going to do is blink the LED that is mounted right onto the Raspberry Pi Pico over here. And the way you have to connect this thing to just mount that, what you have to do is connect this thing as a mass storage device and then you just have to drag and drop the UF2 file onto the Raspberry Pi Pico and then the code will run and the LED will start blinking. So this is very simple and I'm just going to show you how to do it. So the way you mount this thing onto your Raspberry Pi is the you just press this boot cell button over here, you just keep pressing it and then you plug your micro USB cable onto your Pico and then once it's plugged in, you just release the boot cell button. And if you can see on my screen right now, if you can see over here, we have it over here. So what we're going to do is just drag this blink.uf2 file onto the RPI RP2 folder. And once it's done, you can see it's removed without ejecting and it's done. And you can see over here, the LED is now blinking. So what we have done is we've also downloaded the SDK and the examples for the C++ programs onto the Raspberry Pi Pico. So if you can just check this examples folder out, there's a bunch of examples already present. All you have to do is just make this into a UF2 file and then done. There are tons of examples in this examples folder and all you have to do is just flash that UF2 folder onto your Raspberry Pi Pico. If you want us to go more in depth about the C++ programming and everything, let us know in the comment section down below and leave this video a like. Also, if you want us to make a video on how to interact the Pico on your computer that is running it on Windows and everything like that and not on your Raspberry Pi, let us know about that as well in the comment section down below. We'll make a separate video just explaining how to connect your Pico onto your Windows system. Now let's jump on to the MicroPython part of this video. So what you're gonna do is just drag and drop this MicroPython UF2 file onto your Raspberry Pi Pico and it will just run MicroPython now. So what we're gonna do is just do the same process again, connecting the Pico to your Pi. What you have to do is press the boot cell button, plug in the micro USB cable onto the Pico and release the boot cell button. And your Pico will be mounted as, as a storage device over here as you can see. So I'm just gonna go onto my downloads folder and just drag this UF2 file onto the RPI RP2 folder if you can see over here. And yeah, that's it. That will just help us install MicroPython onto it. Now this Pico is running MicroPython. So what you have to do is just minimize this and I'll just jump into programming and I'll just start Thony Python and we're just gonna start coding in Python onto the Pico. So the way you can do it is just go to tools, go to options and then you have to select your interpreter and in the interpreter just select MicroPython generic and in port just go down board in FS mode board CDC just go down press OK. So if you can see over here as Pi Pico with RP2040 is now mounted and whatever code you write over here will be directed straight on to your Raspberry Pi Pico. So let's just now print a simple hello world. So we can just print um, hello world and if you just press enter that's it. It's printed hello world and this has been printed onto your Raspberry Pi Pico. So this program is now running on your Pico and not your Raspberry Pi 400 or your Raspberry Pi 4, whatever you connected your Pico with. And that is it. Now that is how you run MicroPython onto your Raspberry Pi Pico when connected it to your Raspberry Pi 400 or 4 whatever you have it. Again, if you want us to make a separate video just explaining how to connect the Pico with the Windows system, let us know in the comment section down below. 
and if you like this video if we just give you some insight about how to start programming because the pico is a very beginner friendly board if you're someone who want to start coding and you want to learn coding with c plus plus and micropython this is a great board so and this is how you can start programming onto it so if you just enjoyed this video leave it a like share it with your friends let them know how to get started with the pico and comment down below if you want us to make a comprehensive video onto c plus plus and a separate video on how to just interface this thing with your windows system and also don't forget to subscribe if you already haven't and that's been it thank you so much for watching see you next time